Welcome to the Half Done Hobbyist. My name's Simon and I'm very happy you've joined me. I'm going to do a review of the new Storm Speeder kit and give you my thoughts on sub-assemblies and the overall build process. The Storm Speeder is a land speeder replacement for the Primaris range and it combines the land speeder STC with Belisarius Call's far more brutal looking um, repulsor technology. If a land speeder and an impulsor had a baby, it would be the Storm Speeder. It comes in three variants, the Hail Strike, Thunder Strike and Hammer Strike. So that would be anti-infantry, anti-tank and anti-installation, so like bunker busting. It is a great looking model apart from one part that I do not understand at all. What's this little guy doing? Is he being punished for something? Is he allowed to wear earmuffs? If the Storm Speeder crashes, is he meant to get out and carry on like this? I don't know why he's there and I don't like it, but I can live with it I think. This kit was very easy to build with all the bits slotting together well. The pilots can only fit in one way into their seats and their arms can only go in one way. So no more guessing where the arms should be positioned to match up with the joystick on the dashboard. That is a big improvement. The bottom of the hands on one guy match up to an indent on the dashboard and on the other one it's a small disc so you can't really go wrong when you're placing the pilots in and you can really just drop them in and they slot right into place. It's great. There's some really nice little touches. There's little screens that hang down between the central uh, bar between the pilots. It's a nice little touch and the fit is absolutely perfect. There are a few considerations for sub-assemblies with this model. If you just forge ahead, follow the instructions and stick everything together, then you'll be in trouble when it comes to painting it later on. You can build the main body of the Storm Speeder absolutely fine and that includes the little fin on the bottom of it. On the Land Speeder, if you did this, the little fin would make it go lopsided and it wasn't great for painting. If you put the little fin on it then you had to put it on a flying stand. With this you can just leave the flying stand off until the very last moment. It's the roof at the back of this vehicle that really requires a, a wee bit of thought. There's two bars over each side that strap the pilots in and if you glue them to the main chassis and the roof, then you'll have problems getting the pilots in and out. So what you do is you put the roof on, put the bars in place because they just slot right in place and you only glue them to the roof, you don't glue them to the, the rest of the chassis and you don't glue the roof on either and you'll be able to get the pilots in and out easily. So chassis is one sub-assembly, the roof is a second sub-assembly, the turret is a third one and you can basically after you build the turret you don't need to really glue much together until you've decided on a variant. You can snip it all off, clean it up and just leave the parts out. There are only a few tricky bits that I can see when it would come to magnetising and that would be the underslung rockets on, but that's only in one variant, I think that's the Thunderstrike. Other than that I think it should be straightforward magnetising this kit so that you could use any of the variants with it. As for size, it's pretty big. It's much, much bigger than a traditional land speeder, and it's almost the same size as an Impulsor. An Impulsor's still bigger and bulkier, but this is fairly close. I think the flight stand deserves a bit of a special mention. I personally haven't used one like this before, I haven't seen one like this, and it makes a huge improvement. It's got a little ball on top so that you can position the Storm Speeder forwards or tilt it back or tilt it on its side. It's really good compared to the old straight up and down flight stands that we had before. The most ridiculous flight stand I ever saw was the one with the Caradron Overlords uh, Ironclad I think it was, the biggest ship they had and it had one tiny little flight stand and I don't think I ever saw anyone get that to work properly. So this new one is a big improvement. For the entire build it took me about two hours and that was going at a very casual pace. Easiness of build would definitely be a five out of five, there were no problems whatsoever. If you'd chosen one variant and gone for it, it would be a very simple build indeed. Overall appearance of the model gets a 3 out of 5 because of the little guy in the middle. I just don't know why he's there. I'm still pondering what to paint my blade guard veterans in this video up here. So if you want your say in that, pop over there, have a wee watch of the video and leave a comment. Otherwise, if you're enjoying my videos, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one, hopefully very soon. Thanks very much. Thank you.